Hi everyone, my name is Ponchi and this video is to help you calibrate your Z-axis. Sometimes uh, during shipping, uh, some things will get jostled around and, and you may have to calibrate your machine slightly. But uh, I'm going to go through the whole process of calibrating uh, the Z-axis. Um, this one has not been calibrated whatsoever. So uh, this is the extreme uh, condition where you would have to adjust maybe the, the heat bed, maybe side to side. Um, normally you just have to adjust this little screw right here with the, the blue uh, ceramic screwdriver. So anyhow, uh, what you have to do is first you want to make sure that the, uh, the bed is not uh, you know, moving around wobbly. So these V wheels that are underneath, on one side they have uh, just a, a, a nylon spacer and on the opposite side, they have what's called an eccentric spacer, which is offset. As you turn it, it brings the wheel closer to the rail or further away. And you want to be able to turn it with a little bit of resistance, and that's about the right tension. You can check these as well. Um, so this is one I've checked, and all that's good. Um, now, if for some reason these become out of whack and one is higher than the other, you need to first adjust that before doing any other adjustments in the z-axis. And what you want to make sure is that these are touching on both sides. But now, how do we know that they're level to uh, this, this plane that we have here? And so what I do is I just take something I know uh, has, you know, I put a piece of block on one side of, or the other. And uh, this will tell me whether I need to raise one or, or the other. So I'm going to lower this. You've got to move this bed all the way back. So I'm going to just move it up a little bit with the software, little by little, till this thing can fit underneath there. Okay, now that's just fitting underneath there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the opposite side, and as you can see, this side needs to be raised. So I'm going to hold the opposite side so it doesn't turn, and I'm going to turn this one Looking at it from the top, clockwise makes it go up. So I'm turning this clockwise. And now I can just barely get that in. Now this is going to have to be adjusted as well. You've got to check it. And this one's got to come down just a little bit. So you keep going, going back and forth until you've got this just right. So once that's done, you'll rarely have to move this screw for that end stop. Um, that's a pretty uh, drastic of a, of a move, and these are calibrated when we put them on. Um, one thing to look for is there's a, there's a sensor at the top, and that's called a Hall effect sensor, which uh, there's a magnet on that plastic part above. And if that sensor becomes bent, um, you know, uh, it, it will throw the whole thing off. So just make sure we get it at about 90 degrees from that from that board. And you can use that to tilt it up and down just a little bit if you're not being able to do it with the, uh, the potentiometer and that screw. Okay, so now I've got these uh, all calibrated. My bed is okay. Um, there's no flop in it. So I'm just going to go to the software. I usually just put it over to this back corner and start from here. And I'm going to hit in the software the Z Home button. Okay. And uh, I forgot to put my piece of paper underneath there. So I'm going to put the paper underneath and uh, hit the Z Home. And I can see that that's just way too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this, this potentiometer, the little screw on, on, the, uh, on this end stop board. And uh, it's the bottom left screw and it's, it looks like a stainless steel screw. Now, <clears throat> something to note about this thing, there's certain limits on how much you can turn this thing. So there's a little flat on it and that flat up at the top is the center point. And if you take 
uh, and you, you can go about 100 degrees in, in either direction. But if you go further than that, you're out of its limits and it won't work. So you should be fairly close in this angle. If you're not, one thing you can do is, is bend the, uh, the sensor up or down, uh, or you may have to move this whole thing. So right now, I, I've got it uh, too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ceramic screwdriver and I'm going to turn this slightly, uh, I'm sorry, when it's too low, one trick I've learned is uh, the paper is about 0.1 uh, millimeters in thickness, maybe a little bit less than that. So what I'm going to do is in software, and this only works when you're too close to the bed, uh, so in, in software I'm going to raise this 0.1 and check, and I'm going to keep doing that until I get the right tension on that. So now I've got it. it. Took about four clicks. So now you'll notice that little LED on this board is off. So I'm just going to turn this clockwise until that LED comes on. Now I'm going to back off just a hair and turn it back clockwise. What you want to do is you want to slightly turn that screw just to find the very edge when that LED is turning on. So now I'm going to check that and I'm going to hit the Z Home button. And as you can see, I've got the proper tension. You should be able to grab the paper and move it back and forth like that with some resistance. If you can't move it forward, it means you've got too much, uh, you're too close to the bed. So now what I do is I just raise it up a little bit and then move it over to the opposite corner over here. Now I'm going to hit the Z Home again. The reason I do that is so that it doesn't rip your tape as I cross along. If, if, it's, if it's too low to the bed and you drag it across, you're going to ruin your tape. Now I can see that's way too tight. So the way to fix that is that we've already adjusted the Z height. I'm going to take a Phillips and on this corner I'm going to set this back just a little so I can get to the screw. But these are nylon collapsible uh, spacers and what you can do is you can screw it clockwise and that will make that that board go down meaning that there'll be more separation so I'll keep turning that yeah, maybe just a little bit more okay then I'm going to come back and check this side it's still good now I'm going to come back to this corner now remember, this has never been calibrated, so you are probably going to be very close when you get your machine. You probably won't have to adjust these. But since this is the first time, I'm going to have to adjust these quite a bit sometimes. It's still too tight. Okay, now I've got the proper tension there. I can see that this side is also too tight. So I'm being very careful when I slide it over with the paper underneath so I don't damage my tape. Now I've gone a little bit too much there, so I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. Looks good. So I'm going to check all four corners now. now. This is too low. I'm going to turn it counterclockwise. Okay, that looks good. And that looks a little bit too high. So, and you've got to keep doing this till you get. Uh, Get it just right, because this is very important. This is what um, basically the foundation of your print. And if you don't get good adhesion, or you don't, uh, or if you get too close to the bed, you'll 
cause a jam in the, in the uh, filament. Uh, uh, the filament will jam up an extruder. So I've noticed that when I made those adjustments, now this was a little bit too high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this potentiometer again counterclockwise just a hair till the LED goes off. Now I'm going to hit the home Z button. Yeah, I'm still going to need to go a little bit further. Okay, that's good. So I'll go back to this side. Now this is too tight. So this initial calibration takes a lot longer than you know, tweaks here and there. Tighten all these again a little bit just because we lowered that Z height. Okay, so now I'm just going to check each of the four corners, hitting the Z-home button. Now that's still a little bit too. Let's see if we can loosen this one up. There we go. It's always better to be just a hair loose than too tight because if you're too tight you're going to either ruin your tape or you're going to lock the nozzle and cause that to cause a jam. That's good. Good. And that's good. So that's all we've got to do to calibrate the z-axis. And I'm going to check here in the middle, and it's perfect. So thank you for watching this video, 